Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this whole video, we are going... You know what? We're going to, I think, what could be our new local, question mark? What's in the water, because we will see it a lot. And that's Southern California, San Diego, and surrounds. You know, it was just Halloween, so it's pretty fitting we're going to be talking about in this old one, casting spells. Yeah, I know, right? What? It's banana stuff, as per usual, but we will mainly be talking about a search. A search that is still going on uh, to date, as of, you know, when I'm posting this video. There is a whole lot of crazy in this one, so let's give it a go. Chula Vista is where we will be spending time in this old video. Chula Vista, beautiful view if you can get it. of the San Diego Bay. It's known for its Olympic training centers, being ranked one of the most boring cities in America in 2009, its small businesses, golf courses, and just general tourism. Roughly 270,000 people live there, amongst them, the Milliete family. Just, it's so pretty. Cheap adventures. The Milliete family, made up of Larry, Maya, and their three children. In early 2021, Maya was 39 years old. Larry, the very same. They married in Honolulu in the year 2000, so fairly well settled by the time our story takes place, having met in high school. May, Maya as she went by, was originally from the Philippines. Five siblings and was working at the naval base in San Diego. By all accounts, she was very successful and driven in her career. Larry, an optician in the optometry department at the Naval Medical Training Center. And so Maya and Larry, their three children, daughter born in 2010, second daughter a year later, and son in 2016, were all living in the Paseo Los Gatos neighborhood, where they had been living since 2013, northeast Chula Vista. Right by, uh, well, uh, a lot of countryside. That was actually one of the reasons they picked that very house. Uh, Maya, she loved camping, she loved hiking, so it seemed like the perfect spot to get out for the day. So, that's the background. Now we're on to January 7th, 2021. That's when our story kicks off. And it kicked off when Maya's family, her siblings, you know, they're all pretty close. They were texting her to, to no response. Now, Maya was one of those people. We all have them and our friends, you know, you text them, you won't hear back for like, five days. How are you getting on? You'll be waiting for an answer. But this was different. No one had heard from Maya since the evening of the 7th of January, which was a Thursday. See, on the following Sunday, the 10th of January, a big party was planned for Maya's daughter. It was to be her 11th birthday, and the entire gang were going to Big Bear Lake, roughly a three-hour drive north. So they're preparing for that, and it was weird that she wasn't getting back to them. Or rather, she had stopped, as they'd been speaking quite a bit. So, on the 8th of January, the day after she had stopped uh, responding, right? Well, the family couldn't actually get through to either Maya or Larry. So, Maya's older brother, he rocked up. At the house, Maya's brother met Larry and they started yapping away. And Larry told Maya's brother that the night before, when she had last been heard from, they had gotten into a fight argy-bargy, and she had stormed up to her bedroom, locked the door, wouldn't come out, wouldn't say anything to either Larry nor the kids. Knock, knock, knocking on the door, no answer. Larry said she was refusing to come out, and that on the 8th, he had gone off to the beach with his son to get out for the day. When he came home, he heard her upstairs, but didn't see her at all. Then, on the 9th, the family came back again. Still no word. Still no word from Maya. Uh, and so this time they demanded the door be opened. It opened. Inside the room was empty, uh, because of course it was. Larry said he hadn't seen her. 
She was there, he had heard her when he had left the house for a bit, but it didn't look like anybody had snuck out of the window or anything. And her car was still there. Her car was in the driveway, but her license, credit cards, gone. So that very day, the 9th of January, a Saturday at close to midnight, uh, Maya's older sister, Mary Chris, she called the Chula Vista Police Department, reported her missing. Maya was an avid cell phone user, always on it, mad about it. The last time there was any communication was at 8.15 on the 7th of January. As the search was on, her phone was tracked, and it lost connection from any networks at 1.25 a.m. on the 8th of January. Last location, her own neighborhood. So where... Uh, did she go? Well, her family and friends would say, you know, she wasn't suicidal, she wouldn't just leave, she cherished, she cherished her, her three children, she wouldn't abandon them. And so the search was on. Community search is underway right now for a missing mother of three from Chula Vista. Take a look, 39-year-old May Millette was last seen Thursday evening at her home in San Miguel Ranch. We did speak with May's brother-in-law and sister, and I asked them a question on a lot of the minds of people who have been following this story. What could have potentially led up to this? Were there any signs? And this was his response. There were a couple red flags, but... I, I'm going to let that to the police to investigate. It's now been five days since Maya Miliete has gone missing. Her family still holding out hope that she will be found safely. Press conferences and rallies held. Volunteers showed up. The last time her family had physically seen her was on the 3rd of January. This is the weekend before she disappeared. Maya Larry, Maya's sister Mary Chris, and her husband Richard had all gone camping together. Mary Chris and Richard said the trip was uh, a little bit uncomfortable as the Millietes were fighting. So awkward. Larry? Yes, ma'am. Okay, are you there? Um, so, first, I, when it's court recording, do I have your permission to record this conversation? Yes, ma'am. You guys were married 21 years? Tell well, us it'll be 20, 21 years, uh, May 21st of this year. So. 20 years, they'll be 21 this year. Wow. What do you yeah, love been, about Maya? Oh, I love everything about her. She's um, very smart, um, kind, uh, you know, basically just her, herself, her personality, her smell, just everything. And probably her love for life, she loved to hike, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. She, you know, just her outgoing personality. And probably a great mom. Oh yes, yes she is. So I mean, why do you think? What do you think happened? I mean, there's no reason that you can think of of you know why she wouldn't be here. Um, I, you know, I don't want to speculate. There's a lot of speculations, and you know, people kind of like throw these um, uh, I don't know, speculations out. But right now, um, I just want to focus on how you know to get her back home safe and sound and... Now, the police thought it was still a possibility. She could have run off on her own. She wouldn't, but didn't rule out couldn't. And they had no suspects at the time. But Larry, he did hire a lawyer and stopped cooperating with investigators. He didn't take part in the searches. Over the following months, he wouldn't let her family see the kids, with Maya's parents eventually filing a petition See, when Mary Chris contacted the police on the 9th of January, reporting her missing, she said that she was very concerned because Maya and Larry had been fighting, like, a lot. And the marriage was, uh, it was kaput. Well, first of all, we, we thank every, each and every one of you for coming. And in the community, the public, uh, we do thank you from the bottom of our hearts, helping us finding my sister. I'm sorry. The search went on, looking across different counties, parks, forests. They found bones, turned out to be animal bones. Search warrants were undertaken on the Millete home. Multiple. As spring crept in, more agencies joined the search and investigation. The FBI, the Naval Criminal Investigative Service. This recording was uncovered, and it was from the very night that Maya 
she disappeared the 7th of January. This was at about 10 p.m., less than two hours after she uh, ceased communication. Allegedly, not long before she disappeared, Maya told her family that if anything happens to her... You guessed it. It was Larry. The family, even with this, didn't think he had done anything to her. But as the months went by, it seemed less like a missing persons case and more like a homicide case, which it would be eventually classed as. On the 22nd of July, over six months after Maya disappeared, Larry was named a person of interest. Maya's sister and brother-in-law tell me they haven't been in contact with Larry since he cut ties with the family back in January. What? Well, other than, uh, you know, the obvious, I hear you're barking, big dog. Uh, there's a whole underbelly to what the detectives uncovered. It's real weird. While the searches were going on, the investigators were obviously keeping the investigation close to the chest, you know what I mean? And they uncovered some, uh, don't really know how else to say it. Weird shit. This next whole section comes from, uh, it comes from the police affidavit, right? Buckle up. Early in the investigation, the police discovered no evidence that Maya disappeared of her own volition. Or that even if she was inclined to do so, she did not have the caboose. No. Instead, they believe that at some point on the night of the 7th of January, early morning 8, Larry Mugliette murdered his wife, Maya, and disposed of her body somewhere. Maya and Larry had been having difficulties for a while. They weren't just fighting, things had been rough for the past year. Larry had also discovered at one point that Maya had an affair. Or at least he believed that she had had one. I'm not entirely sure if that was only in his head or not. Regardless, by this stage Maya was checked out of the marriage. Larry, eh, not so much. So when the police rocked up initially, Larry said they had fought the evening of the 7th. Then she stormed off to her bedroom. The 8th, he went out for a day with his youngest. When he came back, he heard her upstairs, didn't see her. And the next day the family comes over and she isn't where he said she was in the bedroom. She wasn't anywhere. As soon as the investigation began, the police asked if they could see his uh, his cell phone, and he willingly was like, yeah, knock yourselves out. Every single text message between him and Maya had been deleted. He uh, said it was to conserve space, conserve memory on his phone, which, which sounds like what it is, big dog, a lie. Early on in the search, CCTV was located, showing Maya arriving home on the 7th of January. She arrived home about 4.45, quarter to 5 p.m. She was never seen again, leaving the house. By this stage, Maya had been in fifth gear, separating from Larry. Just an FYI about Larry, by the way, on his back is a tattoo. Only God can judge me. By December 2020, a month before Maya vanished, she had said to friends the marriage is over. She was inquiring about attorneys and was getting ready for a life sans Larry. However, by this stage, Larry was, uh, well, described by others as controlling and exhibiting good old stalker-like behavior. He was increasingly paranoid she was going to leave him. He would randomly show up at her job to see if she was where she said she was and began monitoring her 24-7. On that trip with Mary Chris and her husband, 
the week before the disappearance, Larry asked a member of the family, doesn't say who, if they could get the other guy, meaning the guy Maya had an affair with. During that same trip, Maya told a friend Larry had choked her once till she passed out. Searches on Larry's computer revealed he was curious about things like plant you take to never wake up, water hemlock, my wife doesn't want me to touch her, flunitrazepam, rohypnol, and diphenhydramine. They are basically all uh, knock you out drugs, though flunitrazepam and rohypnol, same thing. So already, uh, not looking too good for Larry. Doesn't improve, let me tell you. Because at this point we learned he was interested in um, magic, casting spells, all that stuff, headbanger shit. You can buy spells like make someone fall in love with you, get rid of money problems, all that. And Larry was interested in spells being cast on Maya, spells he would buy online. Between September and January, he would be buying spells daily, sometimes multiple times a day. What school of magic, I hear you asking, destruction? Alteration, restoration? Fucking Skyrim. Well, he was more, uh, looking for this sort of thing. Please punish me and incapacitate her enough so she can't leave the house. It's time to take the gloves off. Can you hex to have her hurt enough that she will have to depend on me and need my help? She's only nice to me when she needs me or sick. Thanks again. Maybe an accident or a broken bone. Make her realize that we are meant to be with each other. Make her miserable without me. Make her want to sleep on the same bed for all eternity. He also had a shrine to her. That's his blood in it. Let's see. Yikes. Maya had booked a meeting with an attorney for the 12th of January. Larry knew. Maya was last heard from on the 7th of January. Her phone activity stopped in the early hours of the 8th. Larry stopped asking for spells after that. On the 9th of January, he asked the spellcaster to remove or stop hexing my wife, May. He didn't go to work on the 6th, 7th or 8th of January. No one knows where he was. He told his police and Maya's family he took his son, his youngest son, to the beach on the 8th, right? When asked by the police to point to, you know, on a map where that beach he went to was, he pointed at a completely different beach to the one he said they went to. Uh, one that was like four miles away. His phone was also off on the 8th of January for like 11 hours. So they weren't able to track where he had actually gone. That was something described as historically uncharacteristic of Larry to have his phone switched off for that long. A neighbor's camera would also show his car being reversed uh, up the driveway and into the garage. They couldn't see if anything was being loaded into the boot or not. When the police searched his house, they found an assault rifle, which was non-California compliant, a felony, but they didn't find the four registered weapons he had. Larry said they were with a friend, and he'd given them to his uncle when he knew the police were coming. They show the gun collection of Larry Miliette piled up on the kitchen table, 16 firearms in all. The redacted section of the photo blocks out Miliette's four-year-old son, who is standing on the table surrounded by the guns. Police use the two photographs to convince a judge to issue a temporary gun violence restraining order against Larry Miliette several months ago. All my firearms were purchased legally. I'm a law-abiding citizen and veteran. My rights have been violated numerous times, especially my second and fourth amendments. So that takes us to uh, the loud bangs that were heard the night of. Now a neighbor would say he had seen the Miliette kids outside that night. And this is about, you know, 10, 10.30 p.m. The neighbor thought it was odd as it was, you know, that late. And it was quite cold. The FBI looked at the recording. They couldn't definitively say it was gunshots. Husband Larry Miliette claims for the first time his wife left the family of her own accord. Quote, I considered her still alive because she had voluntarily left our house at least twice in 2020 without saying goodbye to me or our three children, the husband wrote. The new declaration comes in a family court case 
where Maya's parents are seeking visitation with their three grandchildren. Maya has been acting erratically and locking herself in the bedroom and would not allow our children to see her at times. Their family continued to accuse me, implying that I killed my wife, Maya. They want to destroy me and they slander and defame me. The husband. So with that, on the 19th of October, 2021, Larry was arrested for the murder of May Maya Miliete. SWAT kicked down his door and cuffed him. Today at 11.42 a.m., the Chula Vista Police Department SWAT team served an arrest warrant and arrested Larry Malete for the murder of his wife. <laughs> Larry was taken into custody at his home and was alone at the time of his arrest. Meanwhile, however, the family was standing by listening to all of this, and Mary Chris, May's sister, she said this. Take a listen. Sorry, it, it is just overwhelming at this time for, for me. I'm still trying to take it today. We love you, Mary. It's been really hard. He's a family. He's our family. Reportedly, in the months leading to this, he had been taking out more and more money from the bank. Maybe he was going to do a legger. And she still hasn't been found. Larry has been charged with murder and with illegal possession of an assault rifle. He has pleaded not guilty. He waits the reading of the complaint, and I have advised him of his constitutional rights, and at this time would like to enter a plea of not guilty. All right, at this time, the court will enter a not guilty plea on Mr. Miliete's behalf and a denial to any and all allegations. We'll show Ms. Martinez. So that about takes us up to date. Um, no doubt there will be more. The defendant has made about 129 jail calls and at least nine hours of those have been to his children. Last week, a criminal protective order was given to the father, ordering him to have no contact with his children. First of all, let me explain what a court order is. It's not a suggestion and it's not a request. It's an order that you must abide or you risk further criminal proceedings. He will now only be allowed to call his attorney. I just hope Maya will be found as we close in on a year since her disappearance. Seems clear that, if Larry did it, the 8th of January is when he disposed of her body. His phone was off for about 11 hours that day, which, is, which gives me a lot of places he could have gone and a lot of time. There is a GoFundMe to help bring Maya home. Her family are still trying to find her. Hopefully, while he stews in jail, Larry might say something. So far, nothing. I mean, he was hiring spellcasters. But what more do you need to know? I'm sure there'll be another update about this story in the future. Uh, when I'm doing updates, by the way, I usually like to wait till the trial so we can have the complete story. So, uh, for now, Shine. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to do so. Be here with me. Um, go on. Here, I'll see you as always real soon in the next little video. Until then, please take care of yourselves. I love you. My kid.